Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and we are going to do a, a contrarian betting breakdown for today's UFC card. We just got word overnight that the Derek Lewis fight was out, so it saved me. Well, it didn't save me anything. It saved me one hundred eighty dollars that I would have gotten back, I guess. Um, so, in any case, what we do in this show again, it's a little different than most betting uh, most betting podcasts. We don't really bet on what we think is going to happen. We're, we're trying to find good value, but we try to find it a little differently than most people. Um, just again, as a little bit of background, I mean, I, my main, my main business, my main history is, you know, running a hedge fund and uh, being in the stock market and being very contrarian about, you know, those types of trades and those types of positions. Essentially, if the entire public is all over a certain narrative. If it's a narrative that is extremely easy to tell your five-year-old, we're probably going to presume that that's already baked into the stock and and probably fade whatever whatever tr trend uh, is is present. If something looks really really good, uh, and you know, again, the, the way I, I boil it down is if you could tell your two-year-old the story that quickly and that easily, and they understand it, it's probably short. <laughs> Um, and if you could tell your five-year-old, two-year-old so quickly and so easily why something is a lock to go down, it's probably going to go up. Now, it's not, of course, that easy, but the idea is that with these markets being so efficient, so much of the information is in the stock that you have to try to figure out what's not. And that type of thing is usually uh, easy enough, I guess, to identify when you have, especially when you have 10,000 stocks to choose from. Um, uh, I actually believe that that applies to to the way all wagering markets as well, uh, especially those wagering markets that are, again, extremely liquid and extremely well analyzed, such as the NFL, the NBA, you know, those those types of sports where everybody's modeling, everybody knows who's who the good players are and who, which team is supposed to beat whatever. But every once in a while, there are, there are things that I believe are just not in the stock, so to speak. Um, revenge, I guess, uh, is kind of the more you know pedestrian one of them. Uh, teams coming off of 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 big efforts, and that goes back to some of my horse horse racing background. Um, just other things that are probably not baked into the line, or at least that's the theory. And that's the way I've been kind of dealing with sports betting over me all my life, and pretty much everything where there, let's say, where, where there's a transaction cost and where's a VIG that you have to overcome. Um, yes, there are people out there that can probably be better than the line and, you know, can outmodel the entire wisdom of crowds. But uh, I think that that's very, very difficult, I <laughs> mean, to say the least. I think that being able to identify what, is narrative based is is a little a little bit easier I think. Um, now with UFC, what I've found is this type of approach is particularly effective um, because I don't know what it is about this, but you have two fighters going after each other, and even though it's it's a sport that's ripe with chaos, you know, so many things can happen. People love to tell stories. You know, human beings are great storytellers, and they like to come up with some way that a fight is going to go, you know, even though it's a range of outcomes and there's a billion ways the fight could go, people are really, really, you know, hell bent on, on just figuring out these narratives. And it's not even just for one fighter. Sometimes it's, it's, it's binary. Well, it's clear that if, if the fight, if a wins, it's going to be like this. And if B wins, it's going to be like this. And it's really just not that easy. So the idea though, is that when it comes to MMA wagering, whether it be on the fight or on a prop or whatever, it's not that difficult to figure out where the public is or even the sharps. You know, it's not that difficult to figure out what everybody thinks is going to happen. And the overarching theory here is that if it's that easy of a story to tell, then it's probably overvalued. Now, I'm not saying that it's not going to happen. I'm just saying that it's overvalued. And that's obviously the 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 goal of 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 gambling is is to figure out what's overvalued and what's undervalued. So um the, the idea again behind this podcast behind this show is yes to give you some stuff to sweat and to bet on the ufc card but also to hopefully train you to have your you know mind think about these wagering markets um in in, in a different way
All right. So let's let's go over the rules here. And uh, again, there are now 13 fights on the card and we are going to be betting one fight on every every excuse me, one thing on every fight. And of course, that's not the best money management system in the world, but we don't care. Secondly, we're going to be betting one unit on every fight. And for us, one unit is lucky high times 10, $180. And of course, that's not the best money management system in the world either, but we don't care. Uh, also, again, uh, the reason why I'm telling you exactly what I'm betting is, I don't know, I just think that's good practice. Um, if someone is going to, number one, recommend wagers, Yes, I think it's it's nice that they bet them themselves. And I think it's good that they disclose the amounts. Uh, I know that you know everybody's into these units and all this stuff. And I know everybody's bankroll is different. But I don't know. I just think it's healthy for the environment, for people to say exactly what they are betting. Um, the other thing, which I think is kind of fun for UFC, is that we're going to presume for the purposes of you know this, that we're going to lose every single fight on the card, every bet on the card until the main event. So the idea is that we are going to try to get all of our money back in the main event. So in the main event today, we are going to have to bet something that is 13 to 1 or, excuse me, 12 to 1 or higher. Um, and that's just kind of a fun way to play. Now, yes, I know there are two main events. There are two five-round fights, but we are going to go with the stated main event uh, as the representative main event, that being Moreno against Al Bazi. Um, okay, so let us get going here. Uh, Janie Lynn Horth against Ivana Petrovich. So this is a fight which everybody is kind of in agreeing, uh, agreement on two things. Number one, it's probably going to be really boring. And number two, the line is 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 wide. And this is what you hear throughout the entire uh, UFC industry this year, this week, is that who died and left Jamie Lynn Horth a two-to-one favorite, okay? If anything, Petrovich might be the one that has some submission upside with their takedowns. Uh, I don't can't imagine why Jamie Lynn Horth would be minus two to one. So if that's the case, and that's what we're that's what we're hearing, um, we are going to be certainly betting Jamie Lynn Horth here. The other thing we are going to have to be betting is Jamie Lynn Horth uh, inside the distance because because that satisfies two contrarian takes. Um, that one it would be a boring fight, and number two that we are you know, um, and number two. That it's going to be bo uh, that Jamie Lynn Horth is 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 too wide. Now, what we like to do if we want to get really triple contrarian is to play Jamie Lynn Horth by submission to take care of the narrative that Petrovich is going to be going for the takedowns. But what we have to do is we have to at least have some kind of sanity check to make sure that the um, that she actually has some kind of shot to win in that way. So what we like to do is this is a very scientific method. We're going to go look and see if Jamie Lynn Horth has any finishes by submission on her record. You know, if she does, then we're going to do it. If not, we're going to go back to double contrary and just play her inside the distance. Let's just see. Oh, and there it is. One, two submissions. And that should be good enough for me. So we are going to be coming right out of the gate with a just kind of a wild one. Jamie Lynn Horth. By sub plus seven hundred for one eighty. Let's go. Uh, okay. You don't want to bet place bet yet because it won't let us because we're on Zoom. But I promise you, we will be betting it. All right. Uh, next fight on the card, we have Chad Ellinger versus Cody Gibson. Um, again, this is this is one which is pretty well settled on. Uh, while both these fighters are 35, 37 years old, Cody Gibson is certainly has the more volume. He's the more active. He's the more fun fighter. And what's interesting is that even at the minus two to one, uh, minus two to one line, you, uh, can't find someone that's taken Ellinger even plus the one eighty. Um, so right off the bat, I mean, you really can't bet Gibson. It fits the narrative too much. Number two, you can't even really bet him by, inside the distance because if you were going to bet him, because you're hearing a little bit of, 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 again, this, this idea that he's more active and that could help him get a finish. So we're just going to have to eat this, this contrarian play and just play Ellinger plus the 180. It's just an atrocious bet. I mean, I can't imagine this ever winning. I mean, Ellinger is just so just boring and awful, but you know, that's why we're being contrarian and that's why we're playing it. Okay. Moving on. We have, 
uh, Serhi Saidi versus Garrett Armfield. Um, and here's another one. I don't know what this is. This is so strange. For a line that has Saidi minus 135, I would say 98%. I'm just making that up. But just the, 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 the feel from what I've been listening to all week is that a huge amount of people are on Armfield. And I think that's just because we're just kind of used to seeing him. And we're used to seeing him in, in kind of fun fights. Um, uh, and we're not really used to seeing Saidi. Saidi had his, uh, had, he lost a split decision um, in the at the Toronto card, I think, where I was actually at the Toronto card. And and one one thing I would I would mention to everybody, and this could be kind of a theme, you're hearing a lot about how these these decisions, if they show up, could be naturally favoring the Canadians because it's in Canada. I, I'm just gonna say this: go back to that Canadian card that I was at in January, and, and see where the decisions came out. It really was not like that. Um, I, it was very, it was a very, very fair uh, situation over there. Um, anyway, so uh, all this love on Armfield, we we are going to be playing Sidey, and um, the other thing is that most of the inside the distance love is for Armfield also. So again, if we want to be double contrarian, we'll play Sidey inside the distance. Let's take a look and see what that is. If it's like if it's over plus three hundred, maybe we'll play it. Otherwise, we're just going to play Saidi minus the one thirty five. Let's see. Um, winning method. Saidi by TK or something plus three thirty inside. I'll I'll take a shot. So Saidi inside the distance plus three thirty for one eighty. Okay, uh, Alexander Romanov versus Rodrigo Nascimento. So Romanov is now minus 130. And you kind of knew that he was going to end up being the favorite. It's, it's a very interesting fight because I talked about this a little bit in the betting breakdown. Alexander Romanov, everybody wants him to be that guy that fought uh, Jared Vandera and what's his name? Uh, uh, Chase Sherman, like two, two, three years ago, five fights ago, where he he ragged all them and, and and got them out of there early. Um, and we've been waiting for him to be like that for a while, and we want him to be like that because he looks like he should be like that. He is. He sounds like he should be like that. Well, Alexander Romanov, but he just hasn't been like that. And and it's not as if, okay, so I've heard the story that okay, he's he's fought some tough competition. He's he fought Volkov. He fought um. Uh, who is it? Uh, Cyril Gano. I forget who the other guy was that, that 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 tooled on him really, really quickly. But even his fight against um, now I'm, I'm getting the the names confused. But he, uh, let's, let's get this right. Uh, he was he was in a fight with a kind of a mid level guy where he really had the opportunity to be that Romanov, and it just wasn't. I mean, he he won the fight. He beat um, oh yeah, B Blagoy Ivanov, but it was a really boring three round decision. I mean, I don't know about that. Um, then he like lost a what is this? He lost by sub in a in a grappling match. I mean, may, maybe just this idea that he's a really good wrestler is just a fraud. Is just fraudulent. I, I don't know. Um, so I actually feel as though this 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 fight is just going to be boring. Um, I don't know exactly how to play it. I mean, if we if I really wanted to be contrarian, yeah, you know what? We should probably do it. If you really want to be contrarian, you'd play Nascimento by sub. That's plus five hundred. Let's just make sure that he's actually has some subs in his resume here. Unfortunately, he does, he had a whole run here. This is like a long time ago, but where all the guy did was was get subs. So, boy, it's only 500. You know, and what's going to have to happen is he's got to survive the first round. So it's really like a second or third round sub. Boy, I don't know if I want to do that. You know, you really, I really should. And I really should play, should find a line that says Nacio Meno by round two, round three sub. Let's see what this is. Nascimento by sub in round two is plus 1,400. 
you know what? I don't do this, and it's violating the rules, but we're going to do this. We're going to go 90 for Nascimento round two sub, and then we're going to go 90 Nascimento round three sub, and uh, let's go. All right, uh, moving on. We have Jack Shore versus Yusuf Zalal. So, again, this is almost too easy, but, well, too easy for, for me as a contrarian. So you have Yusuf Zalal, who, and now I'm speaking the, 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 the language of the, of, the, of the public and the sharps here. He had two kind of careers. Number one was before he left the UFC, uh, like three, four years ago. He left the UFC after he was kind of boring, didn't really do much, although he did lose a decision to uh, Ilya Tapuria. Again, this was before Ilya Tapuria was Ilya Tapuria, but yet still. Um, and then he, you know, went to the regional scene and got his act together and came back just like a freaking mad person. I mean, he had a he destroyed um, uh, Billy Quarantillo, who no one destroys. And then he got Aaron's out of there in one round. He's just like a new guy. And then you have Jack Shore, who he was fifteen and zero, but since then he's just been very, very bad. Um, he always looks out of shape when he walks in there. He looks like he's got a fat stomach. And this is not the new Yusuf Zalal against kind of a Jack Shore who's been exposed. So I can't avoid it. We're going to play Jack Shore just plus, just plus the 250. It's just way too, way too, way too easy, easy to, to make this case. Um, all right. So Jack Shore plus the 250 for 180. Charles Jordan versus Victor Henry. Um, it's a, number one, this is supposed to be a kind of a boring fight, uh, you know, kind of a striker's fight. And number two, again, Charles Jordan, he's at, uh, he's in Toronto. He's supposed to get the decision. He's supposed to have the advantage in, in that regard, but he lost a split decision last time in Toronto. I don't know what people are looking at. So what we're going to do is we are going to go double contrary and we are going to play Victor Henry and we're going to play him inside the distance. Victor Henry, let's see. Um, winning method. Victor Henry by TKO or sub plus 550 for 180. Now we are really, you know, we're we're really looking to go 0 and 12 here. I mean, we're really gonna have to get something in this main event. Okay. Ariana Lipsky versus Jasmine Jazdiavicious. Um I really hate that I have to do this because again, I was at this fight. I keep mentioning this. I don't know why I keep mentioning this. I just, I guess, again, because the Canadian fight, I guess you have the same people fighting. Um, uh, and she got 163 DraftKings points, like taking down and destroying Priscilla Cachuera. But Priscilla Cachuera was, was is literally the worst grappler in, in the world. Um, Ariana Lipsky is not, I don't think she's that bad. So, I know everybody's going to want to play Jazz Davicious to get the top time and control. And, and listen, in DFS, I'm probably going to do it as well. But I'm just going to have to hold my nose and take the 185, I think, on Lipsky. Now, if I really wanted to do to do this, oh, God, am I going to do this? I could play Lipsky by sub at plus 20 to 1. And before you, before you, you, you poo-poo this, we hit this really, really hard. We hit this bet, I should say. Really, really hard. Last time she got a sub, and we made a lot of units on that one. Let's just remind ourselves of this one. Against against Casey O'Neill. And the, the, the narrative was the same. Like Casey O'Neill was the one that was going to be going for takedowns. And I'll tell you something, you know, when you get involved in these grappling matches, Submission becomes in play for both fighters. And we got armbar submission back in 17. We got an armbar here. Armbars are 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 in her repertoire. And uh, I'm gonna have to do it, aren't I? Fine. All right. We'll be we'll be wimps. We will we will go 90 on the sub. And then we'll go 185, 90. On the on the money line, have to do it. Just have to do it. All right, moving on. 
All right, this one, this one's easy. Eamon Sahabi and Pedro Munoz. Uh, the only thing we know for sure is that it's going to be a boring fight. Uh, Pedro Munoz is going for leg kick. Sahabi is where where volume goes to die. So here we're just going to play the fight to to go under. Um, what's the over under here? It's round props. No, it's fight props. Yeah, fight does not go the distance plus two seventy five. No idea how that's happening, but we are going to try it. Mike Malott against Trevin Giles. Um, I go back and forth on what we're supposed to do here. Because on the one hand, we have that kind of play the favorite to be contrarian angle because Malott just quit in his last fight. That's what they're saying. And how the hell can you bet him at minus 300? So I think we are going to stick with that. We are just going to go play Malott and... What you can do if you want to play against the angle that, oh, he, he quit, is play him round three. Um, or maybe even by decision. So let's take a look at those. So Malat by decision plus 275. I think that's very fair. I think that's very fair. Now, of course, we could... Just play Marat Malat round three plus eight fifty. That's not even that great. Yeah, so we're we're just gonna go Malat by decision plus two seventy five. Going against the quit variation. Mark Andre Burial versus uh, Dustin Stolfsfis. Um, okay, so again, from a narrative perspective, this is extremely easy. Barriold has all the volume. Uh, he's got the cardio, he's a cardio machine, and he's gonna just continue to pick up steam as the fight goes. Um, on the other hand, you have Stolzfis, who really his main path to victory in this fight is probably gonna be early. Yes, we'll accept the odds changes. Sorry. Um so these are the things you really can't bet. I mean, you can't bet Stolfitz early. You can't bet Barrio either like round three or by or, or by decision. So what you can really bet is to be contrarian are two things which look really gross. Like one is Barrio, like maybe round one, or maybe Stolfitz by decision. What, what do you think is even higher? What do you think is even a, 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 a larger price? Because they both look awful, which is why you probably have to bet them. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to say whichever is higher, burial round one or Stolfus by decision, that's what we're going to bet. Now think about odds for a second. But which do you think is going to be higher? I really don't know. I guess I guess you have to – I think it's going to be the same. I think burial round one is probably plus 500. I bet Stolfus in the, by decision is probably, probably plus 500. So let's take a look. Right, let's see. So first of all, Stolfus by decision plus 400, Okay. And then let's look at round props. Barrio round. Oh my God, how good am I? They're both plus 400. Am I actually decent at predicting odds? No, no, let's not, let's not, uh, let's not get all carried away. Um, which one do we want to do? You want to just do both of them again to be wimps like we've decided we're going to do on this card? Yeah, I guess so. So we're going to play. And again, this is breaking the rules. Don't tell anybody. So we're going to go burial at round one, and we're going to go also Stolzfus by decision for 90 each. Okay. Um, all right, moving on. We have Chow Machado versus Brenston Ribeiro. I don't quite get this one. This is, again, another fight where Ribeiro is getting just all this, all this late steam and all this late love. I don't exactly quite understand how they everybody can be so confident about this. And I think what they're saying is Ribeiro can go to the wrestling. Um, so again, what we want to do is one of two things. Number one, we could either just play Machado at minus the one forty eight, but 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 how fun is that? Okay, we're gonna again we're gonna fade the wrestling angle and go with the other play, the other fighter by by submission. This is kind of a nice theme of of the way I've been betting. Um, the only thing is, like I said, sanity check. He's got to have shown like at least a submission. 
hopefully two in his in his arsenal. Otherwise, we're just going to just play him minus the 148. Um, let's see. Let's see what Machado has done. Let's see. Any subs here? Let's see. Uh, decision. There you go. Two submissions by arm bars. Okay. I'm down. So we're going to play Machado by sub plus 800 for 180. All right, moving on. We are now at the uh, the co-main event, Aaron Blanchfield versus Rose Namajunas. Now, I'm I'm just, I think I know what I want to do here. Okay, um, so we have Aaron Blanchfield, who is is, listen, she's very aggressive. She has a very very good submission game. Uh, the only problem is sometimes she has trouble getting the fight to the mat. Um, and you have Rose Namajunas, who she's she's thought of as someone I don't know, it's maybe where where action goes to die because she had that awful fight against Carla Sparza, and she's you know she's been in some good fights recently, just hasn't any, any real finishes. She did have that first round knockout like five, six, seven fights ago against Wei Li Zhang, which is pretty insane when you think about how good she is now, uh, Wei Li Zhang. But I think people are just kind of now settled on this idea that if Rose wins, it's going to be kind of a, you know, a point fighting decision. And if Aaron Blanchfield wins, she's going to just get this, you know, get this to the ground and get the sub. So for me, there's a couple of ways you can play. Okay. Number one, you could play Rose inside the distance. Okay. That, that is certainly, certainly contrarian enough. Or you could also play Blanchfield by decision, which is ridiculously contrarian. Um, now, if you really wanted to be funky, you could play Rose by submission. But I don't think that – I think Rose is too smart of a fighter. In other words, if she can actually get the fight to the ground, which she could, I don't think that she'd be going for the subs, you know, because I think that she'd want to – just kind of be in control. Don't give Blanchfield any outs here. I don't know. Let's take a look at some of these odds. I mean, one of those things we're going to do. It's either going to be Blanchfield by decision, Rose inside, or maybe again to be thematic, we'll go Rose by sub. Let's just see. First of all, uh, Blanchfield by decision plus one forty. Ugh, oh, that's terrible. How is Blanchfield by sub so high? Isn't that the way she's going to win? This is this is brutal. This is absolutely brutal. I'm I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to have to be with the public here, aren't I? Well, first of all, Rose Rose inside plus 500, we're going to do this. I I think we're going to have to do it. I I'm sorry. I'm sorry guys, but that that Blanchfield plus 400 by sub is just ridiculous. So we're going to play the naturally contrarian play, being Rose by inside for just 90, the half a unit. And we just have to do this. Blanchfield by sub for 90, I guess, plus 450. So again, I apologize for what I've been doing to you guys. I mean, I just, I violated the rules. But then again, we haven't won a lot recently. So maybe violating the rules is, is the idea here. In any case, I mean, all these things are contrarian that we're betting. So that's good. Um, let's get to the main event now and we're going to have to, so we have 2,160 hours. We have to get back. So we, we have to get like a 13 to one shot in the main event. And now we can't play two, two of them, you know, because we're never going to get our money back. So we have Brandon Moreno versus Amir Albazi. And I, I know what side I want to play here, but I just, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get 13 to one on anything I want to do. Cause this is the idea. So Moreno is, is, you know, everybody loves Moreno. I mean, the, 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 he's just everybody's favorite and his last fight. He wasn't great. Uh, I mean, he wasn't bad. He just wasn't great against um, Pant uh, Pantoja, no against uh, Roy Val. But, at the end of the day, people are reminding ourselves, reminding us of how good Roy Val has become. And Moreno's basically been given a pass for that. And I would say 90% support in the betting, uh, in, in the in the sharps and in the public this week 
as a minus 166. So we are, we're not, we can't bet anything Moreno. So it's got to be what we're, what we're going to do with Albazi. And unfortunately, the contrary, the, the public angle is that if Albazi wins, he's going to be getting takedowns. Um. So I, I wonder if I can even bet what I want to bet, which is like Albazi by sub. Um, what you could do is Moreno by sub. Okay, so this is going to be actually very thematic, right? Um, you have Albazi having the wrestling upside, and then Moreno though to get the sub. So again, we're gonna. This is what we're gonna have to do. Okay, we're gonna have to number one pick the right round. Okay, to get the thirteen to one. And number two, we have to make sure that he could actually get subs. So let's 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 get into these guys' histories. Again, just kind of a quick sanity check here. First, let, first, let's look at Albazi. I think he does everything right. Sub KO, sub sub, mostly subs. Wow, and some TKOs. Has he ever lost by sub? No. And let's take a look at Moreno. He subbed, he subbed Figueredo. He's got some subs, too. Um, so it's either going to be something with Albazi. How about we could, you know what we could do? We could do Albazi by knockout. That's something people aren't doing, and that we could probably get a price on. But let's see, has he ever knocked anybody out? Yeah, I mean, right there. But this is not really his thing, you know? Yeah, this is gonna be a rough one. Well, let's take a look at some of these some of these odds here. Um first of all, rain around one plus that's not even enough. Boy, these Albazi props are so wide. Oh my god. Albazi round one plus what's Albazi by sub, by the way? Oh, this is ridiculous. It's only nine to one. This is, this is, this is, this is, by the way, everybody, you know what you're really supposed to bet? You're supposed to bet the fight ends by sub. But, but one of the, I think one of these guys is going to, is going to get a sub here. I don't I don't know what to do. The only thing I do know is whatever we decide is going to be wrong. So why don't we do this? You want to have some fun? This is what we're going to do. We are going to play both of these fighters to win by sub in round three. <laughs> and that's going to get it done. All right, that's what we're going to do. So Albazi by sub round three plus 40 to one. And then we're going to get Moreno by sub round three at 90 to one. I don't think anybody's playing that. That's for sure. And that is going to do it. A uh, lot of, a lot of fun fights on the card, even without the Lewis fight. Hope you guys enjoyed this and the analysis. Good luck, everybody.